Well, we've talked blueprints already, everyone, so I guess it's only fair that we now give all the other pieces of paper in this game some spotlight too, right? Right. It's time we've talked sketches, but not just about where they come from, mind you, because that's the simple bits. I propose that we throw in how to change up their looks, how to renew a few if something goes horribly wrong, and even show them easily blocking our enemies. Let's get to it. But of course, none of these upcoming scribbles on paper do anything alone besides being potential fuel. So we will be needing a potter's wheel ASAP. Under the science tab, the potter's wheel costs two cut stone, two boards, and four twigs, and will be the only way for us to sculpt anything to follow. The wheel actually provides us with two sculptures to craft immediately, so if you wish to do so, you can place some marble atop the wheel to act as a medium, use two rocks within your inventory to finish the statue, pick it up, and transport it to wherever you wish to, and repeat as many times as you want. But two sculptures ain't nothing special. Insert any sketches you'll be getting into a potter's wheel to unlock its corresponding statue for your pleasure, folks. Yup, that's pretty self-explanatory, really. Thing is, though, did you know that marble is not the only medium we have to work with? We can actually make darker stone-like statues via cut stone. Or even green, translucent ones with moon glass shards, folks. Cool stuff. But note that sculptures will always cost two rocks, no matter the medium. To continue, however, statues can be used as impassable walls in many situations, and will even block some big bads as well. Well, actually, mine is Berger and Enraged Claws, mind you. But finally, an interesting addition that I didn't really think about until I finished filming, but I just had to put it in. The Year of Statues, folks. The Year of the Varg, Care Rat, and Beefalo all had specific sketches available via their shrines, but were obviously inaccessible outside of said events if you missed them. Thing is though, new options are coming to the game that will allow for switching events at will if a world has already been generated even. So these are essentially always available now, so good stuff. But enough faffing about, it is specific sketch time. Pawn figures found in chest biomes or more specifically, the Shadow Pieces Arena drop sketches for the pawn sculpture here. An ideal choice for impassable wall scenarios, mind you. And like a long lost clockwork that maybe we'll see someday. Comedy or tragedy variants of the queenly figures found in the exact same area, mind you. Drop the queenly figure sketches for this statue here. Note though, while the sources may look a bit different now and then, the final player made sculpture of the queenly figure will not. Now the kingly figure sketch comes from Maxwell statues found in various chest biomes or even a developer's graveyard. And yes, Maxwell statues alone. And most worlds should have at least one of these three statues somewhere. But what happens if we do accidentally lose their sketches? Well, thankfully, the game indeed does give us a backup, but it's not a very efficient one, mind you. For you see, after mining the pawn, queenly, and or Maxwell statues, the game starts to give us a whopping 0.1% chance at rolling their individual sketches from tumbleweeds. So try not to lose your first ones as much as you can, friends. But to continue here in a very similar vein, will require us to talk about the clockwork sketches, folks. Having completed the marble sculptures with their corresponding suspicious marble pieces found throughout the world, we can choose to mine them come a full or new moon to not only have their respective sketches drop, but have two very different fights on our hands. Normal clockworks will spawn during a full moon, with the Shadow Pieces boss fight coming out on a new one. So yeah, you decide. Either way, we will be getting sketches for a bishop, knight, and rook statue. So there you go. 
Plus, said statues will be what we need to use to spawn additional shadow pieces later on in our worlds anyways. So these are probably the most important sketches in the entire game. But Beard, I lost these ones too. What can I do? Well, that same 0.1% chance also applies to clockwork sketches in a sense too, so you're lucky, friend. Get to picking some tumbleweeds, once you've mined the sculptures at least once, of course. Thing is, though, we won't actually get the sketches themselves this time around. Instead, we get clockwork-specific trinkets that we could potentially trade to the Pig King to then get additional clockwork sketches. Make notes, and yeah, it is more convoluted than it should be, but hey, I'm not the developer. But make notes quick, because I'm pulling up Anchor and moving on, folks. No, seriously, we have access to an Anchor figure sketch via the Think Tank, and all it costs is a single papyrus to obtain. And the Anchor sketch here is one of only three sketches that can be gotten underneath a crafting tab in such a way, so it's pretty darn unique in that sense. Also, I'll give it credit. Looks pretty good for a seafaring thing. But the other two, you ask? Well, they are obtained in a very similar manner, only they sit under the Celestial tab, everyone. So that means we will be having to find a lunar island and construct at least one of the three Celestial altars in order to have access to them. But we've got the Moon Moth figure sketch, which is one of the best looking in the entire game in my opinion. And then the Moon figure sketch itself, which is another top-notch statue to have decorating base. So go get them. But ah uh, yes, boss figure sketch time. In short, nearly every dang boss in the game drops a sketch, folks. However, in the event that you didn't know that for some reason, or just don't know how their statues actually look, we'll just quickly fire through them. Like with Deerclops here. The moose that looks like a goose also drops a sketch of itself come spring, and it is likely the funniest looking out of the bunch for sure. So honk away. Brave the heat of summer and the sandstorm even to face down the antlion for its specific sketch if you wish. And this is one of the newer boss sketches in the game, mind you. Our fluffy pal Berger looks just as angry about us eating its honey in front of him when in statue form as when it's bloody in front of us smashing everything to bits. The big blue bird, the Melbatross, drops a sketch now too, although I would recommend that you bring a paddle unlike this bearded idiot to actually get the dang thing. But in looking at it now, however, both it and Moose Gooses are up there on the goofy looking list for sure, which is fun. As long as you don't get too burned up, the Dragonfly also drops a sketch that has a really neat fiery base to it if you want to spice things up in your own base, folks. Or better yet, you could sweeten things up with the addition of the Bee Queen statue here, if you can manage to bring her down that is, and might I suggest death by a thousand fluffs in that case. Evil Santa, aka Claus, now has his very own sketch drop and following statue, which is nice and cool. The Rumblin' Bumbling, stumbling ancient guardian recently joined the statue party too, folks. And holy crap, I only now just noticed the absolute resemblance of this Wolfgang skin and the guardian statue, and now I can't bloody unsee it. The King of the Frogs, aka Toadstool, has got himself a figure sketch too. However, we're gonna have to outlast him for it. But don't go thinking that Misery Toadstool has a different one, folks, cause it don't. The long lost husband of Pearl is also the king of the crabs, everyone, and will now drop his corresponding sketch, which you can see here. And finally, even the biggest bad of them all in the ancient fuel weaver offers us a way to commemorate its death and our victory. Well, at least for now. But there you have it, everyone. A super simple, very straightforward, likely not exhilarating or enlightening guide on the many sketches within Don't Starve Together. Still, I thought it actually was very nice to just slow things down for a change and talk some more fun mechanics over our usual nonsense. And perhaps some folk did actually learn a new thing or two out there. So bonus points. Get to sculpting, folks. Thanks for watching. Well wishes to all, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.